Hello, my name is Brian Arnell. I'm with Oklahoma State University. My title is a Precision Nutrient Management Extension Specialist. My job is to help producers and the people of the state with their nutrient management decisions and precision ag technologies. Today I'm standing in the sorghum field because I want to talk about some of our ongoing work with nitrogen management in sorghum. This is an important project for us at Oklahoma State because of one fold. It's that in the southern Great Plains, nothing is guaranteed. Often we have things that come in and really impact our, our crop at any given time. While traditional mechanisms for nitrogen management are pre-plant, they're easy, they make sure everything's in the system. Honestly, in our area, we don't know if we're going to get a crop after we fertilize. So in a way, it's really putting all your eggs in the basket of that one crop. It's been my goal and many others at the, Oklahoma State, at the university to develop management strategies and techniques or prove management strategies and techniques that can help producers make decisions after they know they have a crop. Making sure there's a stand and it's an environment they want to push and try to thrive in. So today we're standing in this sorghum trial. Uh, this is at Perkins. We have this replicated at other locations like Lake Carl Blackwell and up in Alva. This is a fun study for me. It replicates some work we've done in winter wheat, but we're really looking at how long can this crop go without nitrogen and then we supplement it and it recover fully. And we're really seeing some awesome results in this first year, some things that really make us rethink what's happening. So first I want to show you the pre-plant plot. How this trial works is this plot right here, this treatment received nitrogen at planting. In fact, it received 90 pounds of nitrogen. You see it's looking good. This is our pre-plant. It's getting ready to harvest. But this was the only plot in this entire block that had any nitrogen at all. Prior to this, this was a cotton crop, so it's a pretty well drained down nutrient deficient soil. Uh, next to it here, this next plot, this received nitrogen 28 days after planting. So we're moving into a four week window after the application of nitrogen. So we got 28 days after planting. And then we move over here into this plot. This plot right here is 35 days after planting where we see some good, still good heads, good green. Now as I work through these three plots, I wanted to point out some really interesting aspects about what's happening and what we're seeing. First, let's look at the grain size, grain head size, and the grains. So in these, we see that our pre-plant plots have good maturity, good, good grain head, uh, the grains getting really close to harvest. We're probably going to be cutting this in just the next couple days, uh, getting, or at least terminating. We're at black layer and we're going to be terminating. But as we move into this plot, this is the 28-day plot, we notice we have a few more green heads in there. We had a little bit later uh, of development in this plot and then we get into 35 days and there's a significant number of green heads. One of the first observations that the graduate student Michaela Smith made when she was working on this project is that the delayed nitrogen plots, those plots that really started delaying nitrogen on 30 days or more, were starting to get into delay in maturity. Is that good? Is it bad? We don't know yet, but looking at the grain head size, I don't think we're going to have any yield loss at least for the first 35 to 42 days after planting. It is interesting. Another aspect that I think is extremely important about this is the timing and our nitrogen use efficiency. If we get down into it and we get into the plots, we see in these plots on the nitrogen side, this pre-plant plot, it has a significant amount of corrosis, it's yellowing, we have the crops going down and some of it is due to maturity, but a lot of it is due to it's just run out of nitrogen. That pre-plant went down and we had a fairly wet season uh, for spring so we started seeing deficiencies. And as we move into the plot 28, we don't see that same corrosive going to depth, but we do see a generalized chlorosis. So we see this yellowing. It's not just the greenest. We're okay. We have good green, but we're a little yellow. But once we move into the 35 day, we get into this and we start looking at some of these leaves. Now we're talking about a dark, rich leaf that still has nitrogen. And so we miss that heavy rainfall period after planting and we're able to get the nitrogen on and really move through it uh, and keep it to the plant. And I expect that when we get this in and get all the trials in, that 30-day window is going to be a really good application window. 
Now, how does this apply? This allows us some time to get in, to look at the opportunity to, for the crop so we can really stand back and say, you know what? I want to make sure we have a stand. Get that stand up and you have a window, a period where you can apply and not lose anything. Now, I want to move down to some other plots. There's some really interesting stuff on down there. This is a nice image showing the zero in pre-plant 28 through 84 days after. You can see the nitrogen deficiencies and maturity differences across the crop. Now this is the other end of the plot. This is a pretty big trial, so, so we moved down to look at some other plots. This is the unfertilized check right here that I'm in front of. You see significant chlorosis. You see these small heads. You see pretty unripened berries moving through. We have a plot here that this is a 50-day plot, so we have good green. Our heads are smaller. We're starting to see that we got good head count, uh, but we're really delayed. So 50 days later, we're getting still a lot of unripened berries. We move through here, and there's still a lot of green. Uh, and, and we're just pretty delayed. So what we've seen is that when we start looking at that about 45 day and beyond, we start having a full seven day to 10 day delay in maturity. Now this can be used to the benefit. If you are planting late and you want to extend it past a heat period or you're wanting to move through, that might be an opportunity to extend. Or if you plant it early enough, you know you have a little bit more time to grow, there's an opportunity there. As I look through the, the maturity or I look through the, the plant health, these plants, and we've seen this in multiple crops, these plants that have a delay in nitrogen application tend to come out being fairly healthy after they've been applied. The recent research is suggesting that plants that are under nitrogen stress early on in the growing season may actually compete more, put more effort into rooting than into vegetative growth. And we'll see that in wheat where our late delayed nitrogen is a much smaller crop, but it tends to weather harsher weather patterns much better. Uh, but sorghum is an amazing crop, it really is. And I want to point this out. This is a really cool plot down here. We go right here and we have an area that's untreated. We have our untreated, this is actually a border, but it's an untreated check, and this plot right here. If you notice, these heads are very similar to an unfertilized head. So, you know, we have the heads here of an unfertilized plot and our head size between these two are quite similar. So we have a definite loss in grain yield, but look at the greenness of these plants. Just look at how green they go down all the way down to the bottom. This plot had nitrogen 84 days after planting. It looked just like that uh, uh, 84 days before. Uh, <clears throat> it looked just like that just, you know, right before we applied it. And this crop, this it, it's really amazing crop to me. It's completely green back up. It completely recovered, at least vegetatively, from all the nitrogen stress. And you can see that in the nice green leaves. Are we losing yield? Absolutely. And am I going to tell you to wait for 90 days? Absolutely not. That's, there's no sense in it. But it, it just shows the amazing ability of this crop to utilize nitrogen, utilize water any point. I would guess, and I'm starting to see it on these, that we're going to have tillers. So this is an opportunity, if things go bad and you just hold off, we're going to start seeing more tillers coming on. We could have a second crop on this. You never know. Sorghum always seems to battle. Your time listening to this today. I hope it was worth your while. We'll be doing more of these walkthrough trials and posting them online. I want to talk about the wheat data that was mentioned in the first part of the sorghum video, uh, and it's a delayed nitrogen wheat project. Uh, a little background of why it's important for us is that, we, you know, is documented well that nitrogen uptake is still occurring even after flowering. So uh, Amanda, Dr. Silva now, who works with OSU while she is at Kansas, documented that at flowering and beyond, there's still 20% of the total nitrogen the crop can take up along with the fact that Oklahoma State's been promoting the enriched strip for, since the late 90s. And the concept of the enriched strip is you're having a, a higher rate of nitrogen in the field, and whenever that shows up, the rest of the field's deficient, and we make a recommendation, and we apply. That makes the assumption wheat can recover from stress. Agronomically, I always told folks, you know what, you got to get it on within 30 days of that stress being shown, or you might lose yield. That was just an estimate, a guesstimate, not really knowing. So this project really attacked that concept. Started it in the fall of 2016 
wanted to test the inner strip delay, meaning how long could we be deficient to recover? Used ammonium nitrate as a nitrogen source so we didn't have an interacting effect of urea hydrolysis or volatilization, trying to maintain that. And it goes in that we have a pre-plant plot and a zero end plot. Everything else received no nitrogen. Well, the pre-plant received nitrogen, everything else it planted did not. Whenever that pre-plant showed up, we started fertilizing. So this plot right here, zero David, basically stands for zero days after visual difference. So whenever we saw difference, we started applying there. And then every seven growing degree days greater than zero, meaning a day of growth, we started applying. And we applied up to 63. And so that in many cases, when he was anywhere between 80 to 100 calendar days after visual deficiencies. Another uh, image that shows nicely how it looks, we have the, the pre-plant, the check, and then those. You see the closer you get to the last application, it gets greener and greener. This shows the timings of the first two where we had differentiation or nutrient deficiencies from November to February, last application from February to May. For Oklahoma, we're in hollow stem somewhere around the first week of March. So this green, that's our March dates. That's typically when we start hitting hollow stem, and we would typically want to be done applying nitrogen by that point. Start looking at first year of data, and this top graph is the yield of the end season versus the yield of the pre-plant. The bottom is the protein of the end season versus the pre-plant. If the box is yellow, that means yield was statistically the same as a pre-plant rate. If the box is that greenish blue, it was significantly better. The pink color is significantly worse. So in most cases, on the yield, you see yield was equal to or better than the pre-plant when we waited in season. And the protein, by far, the further you waited, the better the protein got and the higher it went. So we had true good data that says, you know what, we can maintain yields and improve protein at the minimum, if not improving protein and yields. Looking at it versus the, the zero David, meaning that, that that first deficiency is when we applied nitrogen versus the others, we very seldom lost when we waited many days after. So we're we're at 56 days of, of growth after deficiency without showing any negative losses except for this one over here, the pre-plant. So in season is the same, almost two or 60 days of growth after deficiency. And in many cases, yield was even better uh, showing that. But, you know, first two years, like, you know what, this is it. We've had weird years. I'm not going to trust this. We got to do it again. Moved on to 1819, same data, two different locations. Hollow stem is somewhere around early early March, so between the 8th and the 15th was hollow stem. About two to three weeks after hollow stem, the end of March, we're maximizing yield and maximizing protein in most cases, uh, looking to be overall pretty good. And then this last year, we go our last year of this project. We've got pre-plant, in-season, uh, deficiencies seen around early February. We're applying into late March, maximizing yield, maximizing protein in late March, which is about a month after hollow stem. Still seeing good yields on protein. I'm not telling people to wait till that late, but I'm telling them don't get in a rush and think, oh, I got to apply, I got to apply, and the weather is not cooperating for your nitrogen applications. Do it so that when you apply that nitrogen, it's the best case for getting full utilization of that nitrogen. And honestly, the longer you wait and the closer you get to hollow stem, the better your final product is going to be and you haven't lost any yield. So again, we've got a lot of other projects in this. Uh, we're putting this on the web all the time. This blog has been updated and will be updated with the new data very soon. Uh, check out my blog, osumpk.com. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Facebook, and you can find me on YouTube. Thank you very much, and I greatly appreciate your time and your attention today.